Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made the way for me. Hello, everybody. We're Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. And as of this taping, today is the 14th of April. Yesterday, the 13th of April, was Gloria and my 60th wedding anniversary. Praise the Lord. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> we made it. We, we made, made it. it. Glory to God. <laughs> and it's, it's amazing what the Lord has done in all these years. Uh, we, we were... We went together for six months, and then six months later, both of us were, were born again. And then three months after that, both of us filled with the, with the Holy Spirit. And as they say, the rest is history. Glory to God. So That was a good thing. <clears throat> we're going to be talking about uh, prayer, and we will, we, we will get involved with what Jesus said during the last Passover meal what's been termed as the Last Supper. It really wasn't the Last Supper. It was just the last of its kind. And it changed heaven and earth mm -hmm. forever. Because only hours after Jesus went to the cross. Mm -hmm. Now, it was a high Sabbath, so it began on Wednesday and not on Friday. You remember Jesus said, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. Now, John makes note of this and that it was a high day. So, as first of all, I want to read this right here from the uh, book of Numbers. Now, listen, listen to this. God is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent. Listen to this. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? I say it over and over and over and over and over again. This is a book of covenants. It's not just the Old Testament and the New Testament. And like somebody said, well, it's just a bunch of old white men. No, no. That's We're not, not so true. old, are we? Well, I'm not talking about us. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, well, we, we're started on that. We're started being old anyway. Anyway, this is a book of covenants. It's called God's Word because it is His bond. This is the Word of God. It does not contain the truth. It is truth. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Jesus, a man, in the image of God, and he could not lie. He, Jesus could have. It's impossible for God to lie as a spirit, but Jesus could have but he didn't. He, this, and let, let me remind you of something else. The first covenant is called the law and the prophets. There had to be a law. When Cain killed Abel, his brother, there was no law against it. So there had to be a law. And this established the law right and wrong, and it's right. What God says is right. And people try to twist it around to meet their ideas and so forth. But Gloria and I made the decision 
that Kenneth E. Hagin, in one of his seminars, made this statement. All of you who would like to make the Word of God final authority in their life, please stand. Gloria and I jumped to our feet and we realized the problem that most Christians have is not making this final authority in their lives. Because that's the answer. Everything's the answer. It's in there. It's the in answer here. is it's, in that book. It is. That's what it is, a book of answers. It's a book of corrections yeah. and directions and protections yeah. and perfections. Worked for us for a lot of years. Oh, my, yes. <laughs> when we found out that this book can be trusted, it can be trusted as a very highly trusted friend, as, as, as a, a, a highly trusted attorney or doctor. There, the Bible said there is a friend that sticks. I just sticks. thought of something. It, you have to, to trust that friend. You have to know him. Yes, you do, Glow. And that's why People, uh, most people fail. They don't know the truth. They don't know what God said. They don't know about him. They don't spend time with him. Don't have How a, are you going to know anything? They don't have a personal relationship with him. That's true. And, and, so and by not realizing that, that God had this book written for all people of all time, of all languages. That's right. And it is amazing. You hear testimonies in all different tribes and tongues, and, and the, but it, it always does the same thing. It, it, if people will allow it to enter into the heart and then renew the mind and then fill your mouth, Things change. Yeah. Faith in God changes things. So, now, let's go over here. In the Gospel of John, the 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th chapters of John all take place in the middle of the night the last Passover meal, the last Seder meal before Jesus would go to the cross. And in this, in the 13th chapter of John, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them until the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. He riseth from supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wound wherein was girded. He washed Judas' feet. He gave Judas every opportunity to repent, but he didn't. Now, I want you to notice the covenant word friend. We talk about friends, we talk about a best friend and so forth. But the Bible said there is a friend with a capital F that sticks closer than a brother. That's a covenant friend. That's someone that between two persons, there is blood. And a blood covenant is the most powerful agreement known to the human race. For instance, in, in the first covenant, in the 15th chapter of Genesis, a covenant was made with God and Abram 
in the blood of animals. And he walked in the blood in the night. Isn't that amazing? God walked in the blood and said, so shall thy seed be. Then in the 17th chapter of Genesis, God appeared to Abram. When Abram was, was a, he was 99, he was about 100 years old. And he said, my covenant is between me and thee. As for me. So Abram did not, he was, he, he was not, uh, pressed to agree to the, the contract of this covenant. But God said, as for me, and then he laid the covenant down he, and he, he changed his name. A covenant had been entered. He said, your name will no longer be Abram, but Abraham. The H in the middle of Abram's name in Hebrew is Hashem which is the name. So now, the first recorded name change on based on a covenant. And we still do it today. A marriage is a covenant. And at that marriage, uh, there, uh, there's a name change. On uh, about eight o'clock in the evening, and... Uh, Friday, the 13th of, of April, uh, Joe Stewart changed your name. <laughs> you walked in there, Gloria Jean Niece. Yeah, you right. walked out on our way to Hot Springs that night. You walked out Gloria Jean Copeland. Now you had to pay my bills. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Okay. Gladly, girl. And it took a while before I had money enough to pay them. But I when, noticed that. <laughs> we were when when I told Gloria when we, we, the Lord led us to go to Oral Roberts University. I said, Gloria, we got these two little children. We get up there, we'll starve out. She said, Kenneth, we're starving now. We might as well starve in the will of God. <laughs> Praise God. But this book and the prosperity covenanted in this book yep. changed that. It sure worked. It sure did work. Glory to still God. Still working. It, it changed that. Yep. And it's still changing it. The, 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 uh, the finances of this ministry are still growing and growing and growing. Glory to God. 2020 was, was a record year financially. Well, actually, 20, 2019, 2020, and then 2021 broke all the records, and 2022 is ahead of that. Glory to God. And it's all because of this book and what we learned from, from Kenneth Hagin and Oral Roberts and, and T.L. Osborne and, and, and um, T.L. Lowry and... <laughs> Rex Humbard and the, you could and, tell we listened to everybody. We, we, we did. <laughs> Glory and to it God. It worked. Oh, absolutely, and it has worked. And those great men of faith now are among the great cloud of witnesses. Glory to God. Now, I want I want us to to pay very very careful attention to the words of Jesus from the, particularly in this. Now, Jesus made a point of seeing to it that Judas got out of that room. That spirit of the devil entered into him and, and Jesus, had, had, Jesus knew it and he had to get him out of there. And Jesus in the 26th verse of the 13th chapter, they said, uh, then John said, uh, who is it, Lord? Jesus answered, he it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. After the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, what you do, do quickly. In other words, get out of here. Now, no man at the table knew from what intent he spoke this unto him. 
For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, that Jesus had said to him, buy those things that we have need against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Gloria, you would have to have an, uh, uh, an, an outstanding reputation for giving to the poor. Yeah. Amen. If you woke Judas up in the middle of the night and had, had a poor widow over there or something, said, I want you to go over there and give her a certain amount of money. Now, that totally belays the idea that Jesus and all of his disciples were poor. Poor people don't need a treasure in the first place. And to have that kind of reputation yeah. meant, and if you read the eighth chapter of the book of Luke, they, he had uh, very, very wealthy women that were following him and many others. Oh, that's like me. That's, yeah, that's a whole lot. <laughs> following you. That, uh, that ministered uh, substance to him. They were his partners. They traveled with him, praise God. Yeah. But now here we are. So Judas is gone. When he was gone out, now listen, listen to Jesus, how Jesus put this. Tell us where you are. I'm, I'm in the 13th chapter of John, coming at the 31st verse. John. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, now, <laughs> now the Son of Man is glorified and God is glorified in him. If he be glorified in him, God shall also glorify himself and shall straightway glorify him or immediately. Little children, yet a little while I'm with you. You shall seek me, and as I said to the Jews, where I go you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love for one another. <clears throat> now that's our commandment. Mm -hmm. That is our commandment. Well, yeah, but- br And br it's supposed to be our reputation. Yes, it is. And well, Brother Copeland, what about, what about thou shalt not steal? If you love, you don't steal what somebody has. No. If you love, you don't kill. It, it covers all of the commandments. And the Apostle Paul said, if there be any other commandment, it is covered by love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. There was a, a man come, came to him tempting him. He said, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus said, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, Love your neighbor as yourself, fulfilling all the law and the prophets. That fulfills it all. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a great teaching right there. Simon Peter said, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where I go, you can't follow me now, but you shall follow me afterwards. Peter said, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I mean, Peter wanted to know. He wants to know everything. <clears throat> Good for him. And I want to get down. I want to go on down. Well, Jesus said, will you lay down your life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto you, the cock shall not crow till you've de denied me thrice or three times. Now, look at, look at the, the beginning of the 14th chapter now. All of this is all right there together. It's just right in that precious moment. Let not your heart be troubled. You, every human being, has command and control over your inner being. Most people. Now, you, uh, uh, wait, I'm, I'm just ta I'm talking to the church right now, to born again people. Don't realize that. It was a long time that, uh, that before, I, before I began to realize that I have authority over my own heart. 
He said, don't let it be troubled. Well, that's a command from Jesus. Don't do that. Don't allow trouble to stir you up. Don't allow worry and concern and not just say, no, no, I'm not touching that. I don't let my heart be troubled. Uh, neither do I let it be afraid. How, you, how, why? You believe in God, believe also in me. That's the answer to that. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions, many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am you may be also. I will come again. So he is coming again. And this is the season uh, of the resurrection. Glory to God. And uh, to me, it's not Easter. It's resurrection day. Amen. <laughs> Well, uh, that comes from actually the egg being involved in resurrection comes from the Seder meal where, where an egg is used anyway. Now, in the sixth verse, Jesus said, now you remember God said, I am? Jesus said, I am. I am the way he is the way. Yeah. I am the truth. He is the truth. I am the life. And no man or no person comes to the Father but by me. Mm. Now, I, I, I messed our, we, I got us into a really bad deal. <laughs> well, it, it, the deal wasn't all that bad, but it just didn't work out. It was an insulation business that, that was, it was really good. But the product, the, the railroad car full of product just kept going through Little Rock. <laughs> and and by, the, by the time we got the product in, then uh, I, we didn't, Gloria and I didn't have any money. And, and so- We didn't have any money when we started. Well, we, and you quit your <laughs> job because of this, this big, and, and had that, I had, I had, the reason Harvey invited me in on it because of my sales experience. And I'd sold a lot of it. Yeah, you did. But the product wasn't there. So I'm out looking for a new job. Gloria's at home in this three bedroom home that we bought on a lease purchase deal because of this product that I had sold. And it didn't happen. <laughs> so, and so we had a rented roll away bed I was hunting a job and Gloria was at home and, and my mother and dad, now we, 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 we ever told them anything. We, we made, Gloria and I agreed together when we got married. We're not going to our parents or anybody else. We're in this thing together, glory to God. And they sent us a 25 pound sack of potatoes. They just, I know it is the Lord. We wouldn't have anything to eat if it hadn't been for that. And Gloria was boiling potatoes in the coffee pot. At least we, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. While I was out hunting a job, she picked up a, a, a Bible my mother had sent me. And there was an inscription in there that said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things. And Gloria said, I certainly do need things. I did. And she just said, Lord, take my life and do something with it. And he did. Well. You know, he won't turn you down. No, 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 no. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the Lord blessed me with a new job. And I'll tell you about it tomorrow. <laughs> We're out of time, so praise God. Don't go away, we'll be right back. <laughs> You have a free resource to help you study and apply the Bible-based truths you just heard. Download the BVOV broadcast study notes today at kcm.org notes. Collect the notes from each week and use them in a group Bible study. 
Use the message outline to teach from. Discuss the scriptures and key points with your family of believers. Gain understanding from all the teachings on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Get the whole week of notes today at kcm.org notes. Life can feel unstable. It can seem like there's no light to guide your way. But faith is the force that turns on the lights and changes your circumstance. In the audio series, Consistency, The Powerhouse of Faith, Kenneth and Gloria explain how you can develop unshakable, unswerving faith that will see you through to triumph in the most trying times. Scripture tells us that God is a solid rock to support you when you stand on or put your faith in Him. Living on the rock of revelation knowledge of who Jesus is and who you are in Him puts you in a position to be free no matter where you are or what's going on. Stand. Keep standing on that solid rock. With faith in God, you get the answer to every question for the rest of your life. The Word of God is light, and you are a child of the light. When you go out into the dark, it's not dark anymore. You shine, and those in darkness see that there is an answer. It is faith in God that keeps you in consistent victory. Faith is the spiritual force that can move mountains and change circumstances in your life. Request your free copy of Consistency, The Powerhouse of Faith, an audio series by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. Learn how to live in consistent victory. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Offer good for 60 days. Outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. In 2022, join Kenneth Copeland at these upcoming KCM events. June 9 through 11, don't miss the Fargo Victory Campaign in North Dakota. August 1 through 6, bring your whole family to the Southwest Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas. And October 27 through 29, come to the Omaha Victory Campaign in Nebraska. KCM events are free to attend. Go to kcm.org slash events for more information. Thank you, everybody, for watching today. It's wonderful having you here with us, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, remember that God loves you, and we, we love, love you, you, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Memorial Day. It's a time to pause, a time to remember, to recognize our freedom has come at a high price, and give honor where honor is due. To the brave men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice, we are forever indebted to you. We salute you. To the families of our fallen soldiers, we pray for you and we thank you. Happy Memorial Day. Kenneth Copeland Ministries is here for you to help you grow spiritually and to live in victory every day. Feed your spirit with God's Word. Go to kcm.org to watch or download the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Read faith-based content in the Believer's Voice of Victory interactive magazine or in our daily devotional, From Faith to Faith. All available to you free. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might.